All the programs we have written so far were static. Let's change that and talk about the conditional statements if, else and else if. Welcome. I'm Kans. I got a master's degree in computer science and currently work as a graduate research assistant and I'm here to help you to learn computer science with Python. Let us first look what a static program is and then make it dynamic. In a static program or a static program flow, every statement is always followed by the exact same statement in every execution. So this here is a example for a static program flow. We first have x which stores 42, then this is followed by y, which stores 23. Then we multiply x and y, store that in z and print it. So let's make this program dynamic and let the value that is assigned to 23 depend on the value that is stored in x. So first we have to get rid of this statement and then move the other statements a little bit further down because we need a little bit more space. Now we enter a condition and the condition will be that x is less than 10 and this condition can be evaluated into true or false. On the left hand side we're going to branch out when this condition is evaluated to true and on the right hand side we're going to branch out when this condition is evaluated to false. So when x is actually less than 10 we're going to assign 23 to y and when this is not the case so x is greater than 10, which is actually the case right now, we're going to assign y minus 12. And both of those statements are going to be merged into the next statement, which is the multiplication. And now we don't have a static program, we have a dynamic program. And we can also replicate the static and dynamic program flow in Python. So over here, I prepared a little program. It models the exact program flow we have just seen. And when I run that, we can see the result of x multiplied with y is 966. And this is static because every statement is followed by the exact same statement it was before. Now we can enter the condition. For that, I first have to remove the assignment of y. And then I enter an if x less than 10. So now this condition x less than 10 will be evaluated with an if. And every code that is indented under this if condition will be executed when this condition evaluates to true. So here we're going to enter y equals 23. And when this if statement evaluates to false, we're going to enter an else and everything indented under the else will be executed when the if evaluates to false. So here we are going to enter minus 12. When we now run the program, once again, we can see that our result is now minus 504 because x is actually greater than 10 because x is 42 and therefore y will be minus 12. We can also change x to 5 and when we then run it again we get a positive number because we are now multiplying x which is 5 with y which is 23 because our x is less than 10 and our result is 115. In the program we've just seen we've used the less than comparison operator. But in Python, there are actually six comparison operators for numerical data. And we can check out all the comparison operators in the Python interactive mode. For that, I already defined x equals 12 and y equals 23. The first op comparison operator is the less than we've just seen. Uh, when we enter that, x less than y, that will evaluate to true because 12 is less than 23. We can also use uh, the numbers and the next one would be the inverse operation of that which is the greater than operator and for that I enter x this sign and then y which will evaluate to false because x is 12 and 23 is clearly greater than 12 and when we change y and x we can see it will evaluate to true again. The next comparison operator is equals. So we can check if x equals y, and that is of course false. But we can check if x is 12, and that will evaluate to true. Or we can check if 23 equals y, and that will also evaluate to true. The inverse operation of the equals is the not equals. And for that, we're going to enter x, exclamation mark, equal, 
y and that evaluates to true because 12 is not 23. And we can also combine the greater than and less than operator with the equals operator. For that we enter again x less equal y and now that evaluates to true because x is actually less than y. But if we would redefine y to 12 and then enter x e less than equals y, that also evaluates to true because x now equals y. And the last comparison operator is the greater than equals operator and it works the same way. We take 12 greater equals 23 and that is of course false. But when we check if 23 is greater equals 23, that will result in true. So now you know about the six comparison operators for numerical data in Python. But how would you compare two strings with each other? For that, I already defined two strings here in the Python interactive mode. And if we compare S1 and check if S1 is greater than S2, that will result in false because the comparison operators will look at how long a string is. So if we use S1 less than S2, that will evaluate to true. An exception to the length comparison is the equals operator, which will actually check if the content of two strings is the same. So if we have S1 equals S2, that will result in false because S1 has the content ABC and S2 has the content ABCD. If we now define S2 as ABC and check this condition once again, we can see it evaluates to true. And to show you that it actually doesn't compare the length of both strings, I'm going to redefine S2 to ABD and then run the comparison again and that will result in false. If you liked this video so far, make sure to give it a like so it can spread to more people and more people can start learning computer science with Python. You can also combine several comparison operators using Boolean algebra. And if you never heard about Boolean algebra, check out this video over here. If we want to check if a number is in between two other numbers, we can use two comparison operators and combine them with Boolean algebra. For that, I already assigned 12 to x and now we would like to check if x is in between the number 10 and 14. So first we do the check, is x greater than 10? And then we just add an and and check if x is less than 14. And we can see that is true because 12 is greater than 10 and less than 14. We can also use the or operator if only one of our comparisons has to be true. So we can enter x greater than 10 or x less than minus 3 and this will also result in true. Only when both of those are false the OR operation will result in false. So if we declare a new variable y that is 23 and we check if x is less than 10 or y is less than 10 we see we get false as a result. And the last one we can use is the NOT operation so we can check if NOT x less than 10 and that is true because x is 12 and that is not less than 10. And we can also use this combination of comparison and boolean operators in an if statement in Python. So I already added a new variable w which we assign the value 10 to and then we can extend our if statement with an and and then we check if w is less than 10. And if we run that that our y will be assigned minus 12 because x is less than 10. However, w isn't. Only if we change w to 2 and run it again, y will be assigned the value 23. An if statement doesn't have to be followed by an else. So when we go back into the code here and remove that else statement, the code will run just fine. x is 5 and therefore x is less than 10, y is assigned 23 and we get our result. However, when we change our x to 11 and run it again, we run into a problem because now y was never declared and our Python interpreter tells us 
why is not defined because this statement has never run as the condition x is smaller than 10 is not satisfied. Therefore, we have to enter a y up here and define it as zero such that when the if statement is not satisfied, the code still runs. So when we run it now, we get the value zero because the assignment 23 to y never happened as this if statement was never satisfied. If we change it back to x equals five, we can see we get our old result 115. So if you only have one if statement without an else and you define a variable within your if and else statement, you have to make sure that all the paths include this definition. So all the paths means all the different outcomes of your if statement, which is either true or false. And if that is not the case, you have to declare that variable above your if statement. Next to the if and else statement, there's also the else if statement or short elif as it is called in Python. The else if statement is only evaluated if all these statements above it evaluated to false. So let's have a look at our code again. We assign to 23 to y when x is smaller than 10. That is true for our case. But now when we change x to 42, x is not less than 10 and this will evaluate to false. And here we can enter a elif statement and can check if x is at least less than 50 and then assign a different value to y, which is now 12. And when we run that, we can see we get the result 504, which is 42 multiplied by 12. And after an elif statement, we can enter another elif statement. So we can check if x is less than 60 and then assign a different value to y. Let's make it five and run that. But this elif statement will never be checked because this one eval already evaluated to true. After an elif statement can only come an elif statement or an else. So we can enter another else. When all the values above will e be evaluated to false, only then the statements with indented under the else statement at the bottom will be executed. So we can enter another y, uh, but nothing happens because this is still true. But when we change x to 100, this one will fail, this one will fail, and this one will fail because x is simultaneously greater than 10, greater than 50, and greater than 60. And when we run that, we get the result 700, which is 100 multiplied by 7. A chain of if, several else if, and else is especially useful when you got categorical data. Categorical means that your data is checked against several conditions, but only one of these conditions can be evaluated to true. So as an example, have a look at this code. We have our pet named Mr. Fluffers. And now depending on the species of this pet, we would like to print out what sound it makes. So we have defined species at cat. And if species actually equals dog with an equal sign where we check this string against this string, we will print Mr. Fluffers barks. If it is a duck, it quacks. If it is a cat, it meows. If it is a cow, it moos. And if it is nothing of those over here, it, we don't know what sound it will make. If we run that, we see the species of Mr. Fluffers is defined as cat and we get Mr. Fluffers meows. If we change that to duck and run that, we see that Mr. Fluffers quacks. But when Mr. Fluffers is a fox and we run that, we can see we don't know what sound does the fox make. When you want to evaluate a statement combined out of several comparison operations coupled with Boolean expressions, you first evaluate the comparison statements and then you evaluate the whole Boolean expression. However, the Python interpreter is pretty smart and won't evaluate all of the comparison statements depending on the structure of your Boolean expression. So let's have a look at this code. First, we assign two to x. Then we check if an if in an if statement, if x equals one. If that is the case, we assign three to y. And then in a successive if statement, we're going to check if y is greater than four and if x equals one. And if that is the case, we're going to print out success. So let's run that code. 
And we see we get a name arrow as we did before because y is only defined when x equals equals 1. We could fix that by entering a else statement after if, but we could also use the annulment law coupled together with the Python shortcut evaluation. When we switch x equals 1 with y greater than, than 4 and run our program again, it now runs without any errors. And the reason for this is that Python won't check the condition y greater than 4 because it only checks this condition if x equals 1 and due to the annulment law of the boolean algebra we know that when we use false and anything we always get false and as this evaluates to false and it is followed by an end this one doesn't have to be evaluated because our x equals 1 will be false and therefore the whole expression will be false. And this is called shortcut evaluation and can make your life a lot easier when you work with complex boolean expressions. All the operators you've seen throughout this whole Python course so far either took one or two inputs. The not takes one input, the end takes two, and multiplication and addition take two and so on. But now I'm going to show you an operator that takes three inputs. In this Python course, the legal status of a person and their name is printed out depending on their age. So the name of our person is Sandra and her age is 13. And if she is older than 18, her legal status is adult. And if that is not the case, her legal status is minor. If we run that, we can see Sandra is a minor because she is under 18. Now we used four lines to express that. So we check her age if she is greater or equal than 18 and then we assign adult and if that is not the case we assign minor. But we could also use the ternary operator to express those four lines in one single line. So let's assign the legal status to adult if age years is greater than 18 and if this is not the case, assign the legal status minor. And we can run that and we, you see that the expression is still Sarah is a minor because she's under age. And we have reduced our code from four lines to one line with this ternary operator. The ternary operator has the condition in the middle, the result for when something is true in the front and the result for when something is false in the end. And we can reduce the lines of code in this program even more. We don't need the legal status variable. We can just copy this part and paste it here and remove the legal status assignment and run it once again. And we can see it still runs fine. We can even change our variable here to 21. So now Sandra is an adult. And this shows us that the ternary operation returns either adult or minor depending on our condition if the age in years is larger or equal to 18. The ternary operator concludes this video. You've learned the difference between static and dynamic program flow, the six comparison operators of Python and how to combine them with Boolean algebra and how to use those expressions in if, else if or else and what operator shortcutting is. If you got any questions regarding this video, make sure to let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to catch up with me, join our lovely Discord community. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss when I release a new video on computer science or Python programming. Big shout out to my Patreon subscribers for their support. And if you want to know about the list and tuple data types in Python, check out this video over here. I hope to see you again soon and I wish you a fantastic day. Bye bye!